About a week ago, as I refreshed my YouTube Studio app, this happened. And as you may know, I use watches, timepieces, to commemorate milestones in time or important people in my life. In this video, I want to commemorate both. The milestone is 10,000 subscribers. And the people? Well, they're all of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right off the bat, if you just care about seeing the detailed review of the Hamilton Intramatic Automatic Chronograph, you can just go right ahead and skip to this timestamp right over here. But for the rest of you, a quick preamble. Almost four years ago, well before I even started this channel, Casey Neistat was at the peak of his popularity, had just hit 10 million subscribers, and made a video to celebrate that milestone. Again, this was before I started making YouTube videos, but something he said in that video really stuck with me. I worked on building an audience, I did all that, and it took me from 100k to a million. See, getting to 100,000 subs was still not as hard as getting to 10,000 subs. You see, getting to 10,000 subs is the hardest thing to do on YouTube. So, nearly two years after watching that video, when I finally started this channel, his words still really stuck in my head. I'm sure to most, it's silly to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. I mean, in the grand scheme of the YouTube world, 10k is an insignificant spec. But to me, it means so damn much, and I have all of you to thank for it. And to anchor my gratitude to 10,000 subscribers, meaning my gratitude of all the first 10,000 of you who made the conscious decision to click or tap that red button, I've chosen the Hamilton Intramatic Automatic Chronograph with the Panda Dial. So let's take a look. The packaging begins with this matte black cardboard lift top box, completely plain except for the modern Hamilton wordmark on the top applied in silver foil. Lifting the lid off reveals the wooden box that bears the exact same wordmark, only here applied in a coppery rolls goldish foil. The cardboard box also features a flap front and flipping it down reveals a documentation cubby with the two year international warranty card and some bare bones user manual. Taking out the wooden box, we can also see the Hamilton brand mark foiled with the same coppery rose goldish tone on the front. And all there's left to do is open her up. This is an exciting one for me as this is my very first Swiss made watch and the deep history of Hamilton, which began in Lancaster, Pennsylvania back in 1892 and over a century later moving its headquarters to Switzerland after being acquired by the Swatch Group, still hangs on to its pedigree of design and rich Americana heritage but now fused with Swiss mechanical watchmaking precision. Taking the watch out and removing it from its placeholding pillow, there's a reference number tag along with a small baggie with little tool we'll get into in a minute. Speaking of the reference number though, this Hamilton Intramatic Panda Dial Automatic Chronograph is reference H38416711. Rounding out the main specs, it's got a case size of 40 millimeters, but has quite a long lug to lug of 49 millimeters. The lug width is 20 millimeters in case you are like me and plan on changing out the strap. And the watch has an overall thickness of 14.4 millimeters. That slightly chunky thickness houses Hamilton's H31 movement, which is their modification of the ever popular Valju 7753 movement with a notable upgrade of the power reserve from the stock 48 hours up to a full 60 hours. Rounding out the main stats, it's got a respectable 100 meters of water resistance, and although I don't see myself ever swimming with this on, it's just nice to know that I'll have no worries with daily wear, even in heavy rain. But let's face it, most humans on earth don't care about watches, period. And me, as someone who loves watches, will always believe this. For anyone considering a watch, the only thing that matters is if you like it. No justification needed to other watch lovers or horologists, all that matters is that you like it. And more often than not, that litmus test of whether or not we like a watch begins with how it looks. So let's take a closer peek, because I don't like the way this watch looks. I freaking love it. For me, it all starts with the styling. It's a panda dial, and like so many, I love the timeless look and easy to read contrast of panda dialed watches. And given that I may never be able to afford a Rolex Big Eyes Daytona, and even if I could, I don't think I'd ever actually buy one for a multitude of reasons, after looking around, I just couldn't find a better option than this Hamilton Intramatic. 
I love that the white dial is more of an off-white cream tone that amplifies its vintage design language, really hearkening back to that nostalgic look of classic Americana. Carrying on that nostalgic look, I love that the branding on the dial is that of the older Hamilton logo. I love how clean, smooth, and simple the creamy main dial is, and yet the two black panda subdials have the lovely detail of those textured concentric circles. I love the relatively thick subdial hands in white that offer maximum contrast for maximum visibility at a glance. I love the date window at the 6 o'clock position and that it has the printed thin black border around it, really kind of giving this a very panda's face look, as if it's an open panda mouth. <laughs> I love how tasteful and clean the overall look is, meaning chronographs are, by nature, busier looking watches, but with the only other remaining words of automatic and Swiss made so tastefully sized and placed, it just works. I love how the minute track has such finely printed black quarter second markings on the edge of the cream dial, and the entire minute track itself is immediately so contrasted by the tachometer scale with white text and markings on a deep black background. I love that the applied indices are both polished steel combined with a square of loom for that enhanced low-light visibility. All of this sits under a sapphire crystal, and that polished steel theme of the applied indices carries over to the entirety of the watch's case itself, and the execution of the polishing is fantastic. Only disrupted on the case back that's heavily branded with the wordmark of Hamilton repeated three times and a concentric circle of capital H's adorning the center. Now let's take a look at the operation of the watch. This is an automatic mechanical watch, meaning it requires no batteries and it gets wound by just simply moving around naturally while wearing it. That said, the Hamilton Intramatic does, of course, also have hacking and hand winding, and that's all executed by unscrewing the screw down crown and then winding it up. Pulling the crown out to its only other position lets you set the time. I'm filming this at 1.40 p.m. right now, so there, we go. Just remember to not only push the crown back in, but also to screw it down when you're done to ensure its promised water resistance rating. As for setting the date, that's what that little baggie was for. Opening up the baggie out pops this little tool, an H with a point that's used by pushing in the recessed pusher at the 10 o'clock position on the outside of the case. Each push advances the date wheel by one position, and it's really quite satisfying, and thankfully I don't need this tool to be with me. A toothpick or any other poking device that's made of a softer material than steel will do the trick without the risk of scratching the polished case. As for the chronograph complication, the pusher up top starts the chronograph hand with one push, and a second push stops it. Pushing the bottom pusher resets the chronograph hand back to zero. And by the way, if you've never owned a chronograph and are a bit confused and assumed the black chronograph hand was the second hand of the watch, the actual running seconds hand is in the subdial at the 9 o'clock position. The subdial at the 3 o'clock position is the 30 minute chronograph counter. As you can see, I'll start the chronograph and fast forward it here, and as it completes one revolution, the subdial hand on the right advances one step, counting one minute. The only component of this watch I don't love the look of is the smooth black leather strap. I can't quite put my finger on why, I just don't like the way it looks very much. And so to start my own experimentation, I picked up a chestnut brown leather strap with some contrasting stitch work, which I'm just going to swap out right now. I'll need to break it in, but me personally, I definitely like this look a lot more than the original straps. And I'd love to know, do you like this strap or the original strap better? Let me know in the comments below. But putting the watch on for the very first time, I was a little bit worried that it would sit weird because of the really long 49mm lug to lug length. But on my 6.5 inch wrist, I think this is just perfect. And hey, if all you wanted was to see the review of this watch, feel free to click out of this video now. But for me, I gotta return to the gratitude at what this watch represents and continue this video by sharing why I chose this specific watch to commemorate all of you. It's really quite simple. A watch without the chronograph complication, without the stopwatch function, measures the passing of time, well, passively. Just how we don't have the control of whether or not time moves, a non-chronograph watch bears witness to the natural passing of time. But a chronograph, with its pushers and the wearer's control of measuring time in specificity, felt particularly fitting for what this watch commemorates. I mean, starting YouTube was a conscious decision and commitment of time over the past two years. 
Every video is a conscious decision and commitment of time to research, plan, film, edit, and upload. And each of you who watch any of the videos I've ever created exercises a conscious decision to start the timer of spending some of your valuable time to watch the videos. And each of you who made a conscious decision to press that subscribe button and push that bell to get notified has gradually culminated to where we are right now, at this moment, for me to take stock of how appreciative I am. And as corny as it might sound to you, from now on, every time I wear this watch and check the time, I will be reminded of you, of your generosity of time to watch my videos, and of course of how thankful I am that you chose to subscribe and kick it with me every now and then, right here on YouTube. And speaking of which, if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll love these ones right over here. If you got some value, please hit that like button because that one little tap or click helps me out a lot. And if you got lots of value, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop. But most of all, much love, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.